Hi, so we're moving on to the next speaker. Um, for anyone who's just joined this session, you can ask questions in the Ask Question box and you can vote for questions that you want to be answered. Um, so I'm about to welcome Carson Siebert, who works for our studio, and he's going to share some uh, good tips on how to style shine in our markdown. Um, so I'll, I'll move on to you, Carson. Thank you. All right. Well, thanks for having me. I'm excited to show you some stuff that I've been working on related to theming Shiny in our Markdown. Uh, if you'd like to see my slides from today, you can go to this link bit.ly forward slash NHS dash R2020. All right, so this work involves two new R packages for theming Shiny in our Markdown. Uh, the first and sort of most funnel fundamental piece of this is the bslib package, uh, which uh, simplifies theming of web content uh, via a web library called Bootstrap. Um, so here is the uh, documentation for that package, this link here. Uh, and then the other piece of this that I'll be talking about a little bit more briefly is the thematic package, which simplifies theming of uh, static R plots. So namely ggplot2, lattice, and base R graphics. Um, and again, there's a separate uh, package down website for this package. These packages are not yet on CRAN, but hopefully within about a month or so, um, I said that about a month ago, um, hopefully you know, we're sort of ramping, getting very close to being able to release not only these packages, but we'll, have, uh, we'll also be sending uh, updates to uh, Shiny and our Markdown and a lot of other packages that uh, have integration for these packages. Right, so to start using BSLib with Shiny, uh, you can use this BS theme function from the BSLib package to uh, provide a theme object to this theme argument that you'll find in various uh, page layout functions in Shiny. So um, you may have used this theme argument argument before in functions like page or sorry fluid page, or navbar page, or bootstrap page. Uh, most of the page layout functions in Shiny have this theme argument, and you may have already used this argument with the Shiny themes package to uh, use different boot swatch themes to give your Shiny app a different look and feel to it, or you know, in a more advanced use case, even provided your own custom uh, bootstrap CSS file. But this BS theme interface is much more powerful and will uh, give us a much simpler way to uh, implement custom themes from R without having to know anything about CSS or HTML. Right, and by default, uh, this BS theme will upgrade your app from Bootstrap 3 to Bootstrap 4, which is kind of a big deal because a lot of breaking changes came uh, between Bootstrap 3 and 4. So uh, by default, this version 4 will come with a special compatibility layer that will help most Shiny apps in our Markdown documents upgrade to Bootstrap 4. So this compatibility layer, uh, the, and the most um, important piece of this is that it still supports uh, Bootstrap 3 style nav and nav bars. Uh, so if you, up, if you happen to upgrade and try to add this BS theme to an existing app and it happens to break your app, um, which it, it, there's a chance it could if you're using extension packages that you know are not a part of the Shiny package or our Markdown. Um, you can still try setting the version to three in that case, and things should still sort of expect things should still sort of render in the way that you would expect. And if you want to continue using Bootswatch themes, you can uh, sort of move on from the Shiny themes package because uh, now with this BSLib package, we really have no more need for the Shiny themes package because now you can use this Bootswatch argument uh, to the BS theme function to specify a Bootswatch theme. 
So not only can you continue using Bootswatch 3 themes, but now you can use new Bootswatch 4 themes like Solar and Minty. And this BSLib package also provides this helper function, uh, BS theme preview, where uh, you know we were just looking at code of how you would add a theme object to an existing uh, app of your own. But this BS theme preview sort of gives you a demo app with all of shiny UI stuff um, stuffed inside of it so that you can see how your theme will have an impact on uh, all of these different UI elements. So here's a little preview of how the Darkly theme would look with uh, you know shiny inputs and uh, tab set panels and all the stuff that you're used to seeing from the Shiny package. So, and I'm just gonna show you how easy it is to create your own theme now uh, and uh, look at how these themes would actually render with this BS theme preview. Uh, so here I'm taking advantage of the new main uh, color and font settings that BSLib provides. So here I'm setting the background color to black, the foreground color to white, the primary color to red, and the base font to this grand standard Google font family. Um, and then you can see, you know, uh, not only does the like the main body color now change to black and the text color upgrade to white, but we kind of use mixtures of those colors to sort of color everything in between. And uh, also, this Google font uh, function, uh, as you'll see here, that's wrapped around this grand standard font family. This function, font Google, makes it very easy to import Google font files. Uh, so it's not, um, if you're familiar with writing CSS or HTML, it's not enough usually to just set a font family on the CSS property you still, that doesn't guarantee that the client actually has access to that font or whether it doesn't guarantee that it's installed on their system. So this helper function will sort of bring those font files along for the ride so that it guarantees that the end user um, can actually render this font. And this font Google can actually allow you to uh, use local font files as well as remote font files. And it defaults to local font files, meaning that it will go out and download the font files if need be and cache them for you locally and sort of ship them with your application so that end users don't even need an internet connection and they can still uh, be able to render these fonts. Right, and now um, since all of this theming logic is now happening on the R side instead of on the client or the browser side, we now have the opportunity to make all of Shiny UI and really all of really anything that's generated on the R side to be properly themable. So now things like date input and select input and slider input, um, you may have noticed like if you bring in a new custom bootstrap CSS in the past, those like custom CSS styles maybe didn't work so great with these uh, input widgets, but now we can derive all of the default styles for these widgets to come, you know, we know exactly what you're requesting in terms of the style uh, for like a background and a foreground color. So, and I wouldn't recommend, you know, setting the background to a complete black or foreground to a complete white. You probably want to use muted versions of these uh, colors. So you, you might want to look around at the web that um, have suggestions for better, you know, color palettes. So here is uh, Google's suggestion for a dark mode called Material Dark. And I've provided the hex colors that they suggest for a background color and a foreground color and a primary color. And this is how that would look uh, with this grand standard font. Right, and uh, if you wanna use BSLib with uh, our Markdown HTML document, uh, the idea is that you can provide the same arguments um, 
well, let me back up for a second. So you maybe have, are already familiar with using uh, this theme parameter of HTML document to specify a boot swatch theme. Um, so you might have set this to something like theme colon darkly before. But now if you provide a list of arguments to this BS theme function from BS lib, then we will automatically kick into BS, BS lib uh, logic and uh, you know, use your background, foreground, primary, and font uh, settings, and uh, use that to influence the final C influence the final CSS that goes on to the uh, final HTML document. And this currently requires an experimental version of our markdown, but um, the plan is within the next couple of weeks, this should land on the master version of our markdown, and then eventually make it make its way to CRAN. And I do just want to pause a little bit here at the moment and, and sort of mention that this is sort of a massive undertaking that we're taking on, that uh, you know, the goal is to make as much as possible uh, themable through this BS theme interface. Um, and it's going to take us a while to get there um, in the sense of, you know, being able to think about really any component that you render through Shiny Art Markdown as being themable. Um, but sort of the current state of where we're at uh, is that in the next CRAN release of these packages, uh, you know, anything that you use from the Shiny package, anything from like slider input to show notification to navbar page, all of the functions in the Shiny package uh, should be uh, themable through BSLib. And the same goes for our Markdown HTML document, as well as the DT package. And uh, more generally, as long as you're um, using HTML and CSS that isn't conflicting with the CSS that uh, ends up going on the page, uh, then you, know, you can consider that stuff themable, I guess. But you know, there's lots of examples of stuff that, you know, are too overly opinionated about um, their styles or, you know, their styles don't directly come from CSS, where there's a lot of work that, you know, is now in front of us to make um, all of these things themable. So we would, of course, love um, help from the community to make some of these things themable because, we would like to get up to a point where we could think about essentially any HTML uh, based R markdown output format could work with a similar theming interface. Uh, the same goes for you know, HTML widget packages like Plotly, React Table. Um, these are sort of in a different category where these things aren't necessarily styled with CSS. They might have their styles coming from like SVG or like a JSON based interface. Um, so that's kind of like a different category of problem. Um, but then also other extension packages like Shiny widgets where they kind of, you know, implement their own custom Shiny bindings. Uh, we, we also, you know, we, we at least have the foundation for all of these things to now become themable. Um, but now we sort of have to undertake the work of actually updating all of the code that <laughs> behind, um, you know, what provides the styles for these specific um, extension packages and sort of providing, um, sort of rewriting it to use this new foundation. Um, and then there's another whole different category. I did kind of slightly lie to you that all of the Shiny package is themable, at least um, in the context of the BSLib package itself. Um, uh, when it comes to plot output, you'll have to use this thematic package to essentially translate CSS to R plots. So to give you an example of, you know, what I mean here about plot output not being themable, you might take your BS theme object and implement, uh, this is like a solar theme that has a dark green background and a light green foreground. And if I provide this to a fluid page, then that would actually style this tab set panel 
Um, so that gives me the styles on these tabs here. But then these plot, the content inside of these plot outputs know nothing about the uh, theming object that I've provided to the fluid page. But the, the thematic package makes it very easy to essentially translate this VS theme to new styling defaults for the R plots. So just by calling this function thematic shiny before these plots are generated, uh, thematic will enable itself globally inside of the shiny app and make sure that all of the plots generated by the shiny app will derive new uh, defaults from the CSS on the page. And I do want to make a side note that the thematic package can be used uh, more generally um, than uh, just with Shiny. And I, it looks like I'm already, I'm talking very slow, slowly here, so I'm going to kind of uh, brush by a lot of this. But I just want to mention that thematic has a very similar interface where you can set like background, foreground, and accent colors. And this will end up setting new defaults for your R plots. Um, and it also has some special uh, integration with Google Fonts and automatically installing them if you need, need them. Uh, but these arguments all default to this auto detection behavior, which was what makes like the thematic Shiny example work. Um, so this auto behavior works best with Shiny render plot, because in that case, we know exactly what CSS is on the page. So you can use this with any CSS framework, not just VS Lib. Uh, but you'll want to use bslib if you want to use this auto detection behavior inside of uh, our markdown with HTML document. Uh, you can also use this auto behavior inside of our studio. It will be based on your RStudio theme. Uh, but I do really want to show you this demo before I run out of time. Uh, we saw this BS theme preview to you know, get a preview of how a theme looks. And uh, this previewing function also overlays a real-time theming widget. Oh, come on. Looks like my computer's being quite sluggish. Uh, but I get this interactive theming widget on top of the application that allows me to look at different uh, Bootswatch themes. So I could choose a Cosmo theme or a Darkly theme. And this is going to have like a dark background to it. And I can even go in and change the background and foreground colors as well. So I say I want like a dark red instead of a dark black. I can change accent colors. I can change fonts. Um, I can change all sorts of things with this interactive real-time themer. And when I make changes, it actually emits R code to replicate the changes that I've made interactively. So you could copy this code and uh, put it into your Shiny app to replicate the changes you make it make in real time. And you can add this to any Shiny app by calling this BS themer inside of the server code. It also works with runtime Shiny or Markdown documents. And we're also providing this on a foundation that you can build upon. So you can implement your own theming widgets with this set current theme method on a session object. So you could implement something like a dark mode switch for your Shiny app. Uh, so in summary, use bslib uh, bs theme to theme Shiny in our markdown. This is also, if you don't even want to do theming, you can upgrade to Bootstrap 4 this way. Uh, you can use Bootswatch themes or design your own custom themes. You can use this real-time themer to quickly preview and update themes. And if you want any more details on more advanced theming stuff, check out this theming article. Um, and then use thematic uh, for easier theming of R plots. And you can use it as a way to automatically translate your BS theme uh, CSS to uh, new defaults for your R plots. So thank you. Uh, thank you very much. That was super interesting. I think I'm not the only one who's going to waste a few hours just playing around with different colors and, and looks for most of my shiny apps. Um, so we've got two questions. I think one of them you might have covered, but I just want to make sure I haven't misunderstood anything. 
So when you set options under theme in the RMD YAML, will they automatically apply to plots that's been in the rendered HTML doc as well? Sorry, let me just repeat the question, make sure I heard it. Um, so if I set, yeah. uh, I think I'll go back to this slide here. Yes. Um, so if I set these options in a HTML document, will those styles automatically propagate to, to, um, plots. to, to our plots? No, yeah. you, you'll need to enable thematic in order to do that. Um, yeah. So if you just, if you have like a setup chunk below this YAML, if you just call thematic on or thematic RMD, um, then that will enable thematic for um, the entire um, knitting phase of the document. So you could just call that function once and it will um, know about the theme set in your YAML and use that for the R plots that are generated. Great, that sounds uh, super convenient. So the next question was, did I understand correctly that a custom styling sheet will override any theming from VSLib? Yes, so that's an important point that if you're familiar already with like, you know, layering on your custom CSS already, um, that will continue to work in the sense that um, you can still override the sort of styles that come by default with Bootstrap by layering on additional CSS. The whole idea here of using this BS theme is customizing the Bootstrap CSS that comes by default. Um, so we're not like layering on new CSS, we're essentially just tweaking the CSS that already exists on the page. Um, so if you're providing your own custom CSS, you, you can still continue to do that. Uh, but I would recommend checking out uh, functions from the bslib package. Uh, namely, I don't think I, ha I didn't have a slide on this, but uh, you can, um, there are functions to modify BS theme objects. Namely, there's a BS add rules that allows you to add uh, CSS or SAS rules. Um, and if you're willing, if, if you know anything about SAS, it's like all of this is powered off of SAS. Uh, it's a better way to write CSS um, that allows you to take advantage of more powerful, you know, tools and techniques. Um, I didn't really have the time to get into that here, but uh, if you write CSS already, look into BS add rules and um, also look at like the package down site for BSLib. There's some examples there that show you how to leverage like new SAS and CSS techniques. Great. So I think we've got a comment from the person who asked the question, and I think that's exactly the answer. I think she's very happy with that. So I think we have to move on to the next session now. Okay. Uh, but thank you very much. Uh, mm -hmm for that presentation and um, thanks for having me. Yes, I think we'll